Hi there! Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that's not very fun for me but might be super helpful in your journey. Beginner mistakes I wish I knew sooner in food and product photography. When I began my food and product photography journey, I was full of excitement to capture delicious looking meals and irresistible product photos. Like any newcomer, I made my fair share of mistakes. And reflecting back, there are five significant ones I wish I had known about earlier. Today, I'm sharing these insights with you to help you steer clear of these common traps and speed up your progress in food and product photography. Let's start with the first biggie, neglecting lighting. One of the most fundamental aspects of food and product photography is lighting. And it's a mistake I wish I had grasped from day one. Natural light is fantastic if you're on a budget and don't have professional lights. Just make sure to steer clear of harsh direct light from above or strong sunlight because they can create unappealing shadows and overexpose parts of your photos. Instead, go for a soft, gentle light. A window facing north is perfect, but if that's not an option, you can use sheer curtains or diffusers to soften sunlight. Keep in mind, the quality of light can make or break your food and product photos. Here are some of my old photos before I learned different lighting techniques. And speaking of lighting, let me add a crucial tip about tungsten contamination. Sometimes, an accidental orange glow from a light source can spoil a photo, like what happened in this particular photo due to my room's light. This unintentional orange highlights caused by forgotten lights can be tough to fix during editing, so always be mindful of the lighting source or uh, everything in the surrounding of your setup. Tungsten contamination caused by different light temperatures can throw off the color balance in your photos. So use consistent daylight balanced lighting to prevent color issues. If you do run into this problem, fixing it later during editing can be really challenging. So here's a tip when taking photos. Turn off any unnecessary lights during the shoot to avoid tungsten contamination and mixed lighting. I tried to recreate this photo recently using and I would say a correct lighting setup and got this as a result. So basically, I cooked the same meal and added a bit of styling and here's the 2018 versus 2023 version. Next on my not so fun list is ignoring composition. In the world of food and product photography, how you arrange things in your photo matters a lot. When I started, I would just put my subject in the middle of the frame and add a few props randomly, not really thinking about how it looked. I basically just went with the flow. What really boosted my game in this aspect was reading the book Mastering Composition by Richard Garvey Williams. Now, I consciously use different composition rules like the rule of thirds, leading lines, and framing to make my compositions more eye-catching. I've also learned not to stick to one angle. I experiment with different perspectives like shooting from above or getting on the same level as the food. So don't hesitate to move around and find the best view for your subject. And this brings me to another point, not taking enough shots. Beginners often snap only a few photos from one angle and with one setting. It's essential to play around and take multiple shots to give yourself plenty of choices, especially if you're doing it for a client work. So for me, the sweet spot is three to five shots per angle. Three to five shots at eye level, three to five shots from above, and three to five shots at a three quarters angle. These shots include close-ups, medium shots, and extreme close-ups, giving me a variety to pick from. Variety is your friend when it comes to photography. Let's move on to another beginner mistake I wish I knew sooner, ignoring color theory. Color theory isn't just about making your photos look nice, it's about effectively speaking to your audience and enhancing their experience. Choosing the right colors can make your photos pop and grab the viewer's attention. Different colors can evoke different feelings and moods. 
For example, blues and greens are calming, while yellows, oranges, and reds bring warmth and positivity. The colors you use in your food photography convey a message about how the food might taste, helping viewers decide if they want to try the food or the recipe. When I started, I didn't pay much attention to color theory. This resulted in my photos lacking visual interest and not effectively conveying the taste of the food. Without the right color combinations, your images might not stand out or catch the viewer's eye. If the colors in your image don't match the mood or emotion you're aiming for, it can confuse viewers or give them the wrong impression. Using too many colors, on the other hand, or colors that clash can overwhelm the image and distract. Just like what happened in my photo here. In food photography, if the colors don't accurately represent how delicious the food is, it might discourage viewers from trying the recipe or if it's a, for a food business, from trying the food. A resource that really helped me overcome my lack of knowledge about color theory was the book Understanding Color in Photography by Brian Peterson. I loved how he explained color theory and provided hands-on activities to train my eye to see color in photography in a new light. Next, let's talk about another common mistake when starting out. Going overboard with photo editing. It is so tempting to use all of those fancy editing tools, but sometimes less is better. Looking back, I wish I knew that a gentle touch goes a long way. It's important not to go too crazy with color, sharpness, or heavy filters that can make your food look completely unreal. The key is to bring out the natural beauty of your dish instead of changing it too much. Small tweaks can make your photos more appealing and genuine, especially now that people appreciate imperfections. Being too perfect is kind of dull. People want to see the real deal. This applies to food and product photos too. The more natural and genuine they look, the more captivating they are for viewers. I remember I once read about a study showing that photos with real people interacting with a product get more clicks than heavily photoshopped product photos. They call them lifestyle photos. It's about showing your target audience how they can use your product by modeling it. For food, it's showing your audience how you would naturally enjoy the meal. It's all about keeping it real and relatable. With all of that being said, nowadays, my editing process is super simple. I adjust the brightness, add a touch of contrast and vibrancy, tweak the colors, throw in a bit of clarity, texture, and sharpness, and play around with the tone curve. I also use AI to help remove any noise. These are subtle edits, but they make a huge difference. So if you're interested, I can create a video tutorial showing exactly how I edit my food and product photos, so let me know in the comments below. Now, let's talk about the last and definitely not the least mistake on my beginner's list, forgetting to practice. I can't stress enough how crucial consistent practice is. The more you snap those shots, the better you'll get. You see, when I first started taking food photos, I'd sometimes hit a wall. If the results didn't match my vision, I'd stop shooting for days or even weeks. I'd get burned out, feeling frustrated with myself, and instead of seeking feedback and learning, I'd wallow in self-pity. But here's what I've learned the hard way. Becoming a skillful or skilled food and product photographer takes time and lots of practice. You don't become great by taking just a handful of photos. You need to click through hundreds, even thousands of shots to truly master this art. So, don't let initial failures discourage you. Treat them as opportunities to learn and grow. Experiment with different dishes, products, props, and lighting setups. Seek inspiration from photography resources like books, blogs, and Instagram accounts. And consider joining photography communities where you can share your work and receive helpful feedback. Now, before I wrap this up, here's a quick bonus mistake I had to learn the hard way. Not all camera lenses are created equal. When I started, I thought my mirrorless camera with the kit lens would give me those mouth-watering food photos I admired in cookbooks and magazines. Well, it turns out you need a specific lens for a different focal point or for different effects. 
I adore close-up shots of food and products, so I discovered that you need a macro lens for that. So I got myself a 60mm equivalent macro lens, and it finally allowed me to capture those delightful close-ups. But that's not all. I also love those dreamy blurred backgrounds with a shallow depth of field. To achieve that, you need a lens with a wide aperture. So I added a prime lens with an aperture of f1.7 to my gear. And voila! Those magical creamy background blurs became possible. In a nutshell, diving into food and product photography is no doubt an exciting journey filled with creativity and exploration. My key advice, keep learning and pushing forward no matter what. Curiosity is your best friend. If something stumps you, dive into it, study it until it's crystal clear. If you're inspired by a certain photographer's style, experiment until you bring your envisioned photo to life. Or until you share your uniqueness to that style. By sharing my mistakes and experiences, my hope is to save you from heartaches and missteps, speeding up your learning and growth. I recommended a few books to help you in your photography journey, but if reading isn't your thing and you prefer visual learning, I've got comprehensive classes covering the essence of food and product photography on Skillshare. Check them out through the link in the description below. Thanks a lot for joining me. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that enchanting subscribe button for more insider tips on food and product photography. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!